One common question that we get at Doman International is, why does my child with special needs have difficulty walking up and down stairs? And this is a, a very common issue for parents to have with kids with developmental delays, with special needs, regardless of the diagnosis, whether it is autism or cerebral palsy or Down syndrome or developmental delay, whatever the diagnosis is, it's very, very common for kids with neurodevelopmental issues to have a, a challenge walking up and down stairs. Now, there are really two main reasons for this problem, and the first is obvious and the second isn't. The obvious issue is the motor problem, right? The difficulty that children might have with balancing themselves, coordinating their movements as they're walking up and down stairs. That's relatively obvious, right? You don't have to be an expert to know that. The, the second part, which is less obvious, is a problem of vision. And this is a issue of visual convergence. Visual convergence is the ability uh, of the human brain to accept the image from our two eyes and put those two images together in one clear image. So think about it for a second. One of the most amazing abilities of the human brain is this ability to take um, the images from our two different eyes and uh, blend it together, put it together into one clear image. The problem is for so many kids with special needs, they don't have normal visual convergence. Uh, they don't uh, have that one clear image. They instead have two different images coming from their two different eyes and their brain has difficulty with, uh, it could be double vision, blurry vision, and that creates uh, all kinds of havoc. The, here's the issue, right? If you have double vision, it makes it almost impossible to perceive depth. So when you're walking downstairs, for example, you can't perceive how far that next step is down. And so it makes it very, very challenging for the child to walk down the stairs without holding on to something. Parents will often see their children kind of grip that railing very, very tight as they're walking downstairs, and there's a reason for it. The kid doesn't know how far the next step is down, and they're really worried they're gonna miss the step and fall, right? And so that makes it completely logical why they're so worried uh, about their ability to walk down the, the stairs. Now, when I uh, mention visual convergence to most parents, they've never even heard of it before, right? And so some parents might already be aware that their child has an issue in this area uh, because the child might have been diagnosed, for example, with a strabismus or with a lazy eye, right? And sometimes parents will see this in their own child early on where they'll see, you know, one eye will kind of turn inward or one eye will turn outward, right? And so when the eye goes in, that's called a convergent strabismus. And if the eye turns out, that's called a divergent strabismus. And uh, so some parents are already aware that their child has this visual issue. They just don't know that that's why the child can't get up or down the stairs easily. And then there are other parents who, who don't see this at all. You know, maybe they might notice that they're their one eye goes in or out when their child is tired, but they, they don't tend to notice on a given day that their child uh, has a convergence issue. And so uh, many parents, the kind of next logical question is, well then, how do I check my child's convergence? How would I know if my child has normal convergence or not? Well, uh, first of all, any issues with the depth perception, like uh, always wanting to hold the railing when going up and down the stairs, is often a sign of a convergence problem. Also, problems with hand-eye or foot-eye coordination. So if you have a child who has difficulty catching or kicking a ball, um, you know, difficulty playing some kind of sport like a tennis where you have to uh, connect the racket with the ball. Because if you think about it, if a ball is moving at a fast pace and you have to use your two eyes to track that ball as it's moving, if you have even a slight convergence issue, it's gonna make it really, really difficult. I mean, imagine trying to catch a ball if you have double vision, right, or blurred vision, it's gonna be really, really tough. Now, even if a child was able to do all of those things, right, and parents didn't notice any issues, well, the next thing that we would do to check convergence is tracking activities. Because uh, one of the toughest things that we can um, use our convergence for 
is with tracking. So for example, here I have a coin in front of me. It's a tiny object and I'm going to track it with my eyes from side to side. Okay, so this is an activity that you could do with your child, having them track an object side to side, up and down, right? Uh, and then even getting closer and farther away from them. Okay, you should do this very slowly so that it's not difficult for them to track, but even moving it slowly, you'll find many children will kind of like look away, they'll close their eyes, uh, so they'll have difficulty with focusing on a tiny object and tracking it everywhere. A child with normal convergence should be able to track easily, right? They shouldn't have to move their head, right? They should be able to, even with their head still, move their eyes tracking an object from side to side, up and down, and even as close as 10 centimeters or four inches. So that means if you hold this object even 10 centimeters away, they should be able to converge their two eyes on that object. If they can't do that, again, that's an indicator of a convergence issue. Now, at this point, if a parent has realized that their child likely has an issue with visual convergence, the next logical question is, well, what can I do about it as a parent? And well, the Doman Method has a whole series of activities and programs that can be done at home that are designed to help treat the area of the brain uh, where visual convergence is controlled. This is an, a low area of the brain called the midbrain, and it's in charge of things like visual convergence, auditory and tactile processing. Uh, it's also uh, important for physical coordination. And so very often children that have convergence problems also have auditory and tactile issues, coordination issues, and uh, often these domain method programs that target the midbrain uh, not only help visual convergence, but also help those other areas as well. And of course, if parents are interested in learning more about uh, how we help children with these kinds of issues, they can go to our website, domaininternational.org, and fill out a contact form, and one of our worldwide representatives will contact them and, and speak to them about the domain method and how it may be able to help their child.